Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today I'm going to be making another dragon design. I wanted to do something kind of ground based and I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to go about it. So I'm going to do a quick sketch and then we'll get working on the actual piece. Uh, before we start, I do want to let you guys know that I got a new mic, so the audio might be a little different. Um, if it sounds worse, let me know. I think it sounds better, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to go about making my ground dragon. I just knew I wanted something with a lot of armor scaling and something that looked like it dug into the dirt a lot. So I kind of decided to sketch something. At first I was going a little bit more armadillo-like, but I just, I just wasn't liking it, so I kind of changed it up and went more monitor lizard shape. I was a lot happier with this body shape for our dragon. Um, the only thing I didn't sketch on the little pre-sketch was the wings. I had an idea of having them tuck in a little bit, but it didn't quite work out. But for now, I'm just trying to figure out the layout of the body. The wings, I'm gonna leave pretty basic. I have an idea already in my head for them. Once I have the idea flushed out for our ground dragon, I'm then going to start on the clay. So the main clay that we're going to be working on is going to be a clay head and then we have claws. I'm actually going to be making posable toes for this piece. So right now I'm just trying to get a basic shape laid out for how I want the head. I want it very monitor shaped and a little bit of a squished nose. We're going to have a lot of scaling and stuff. but mainly just trying to get the actual shape and figure out where I want the key features like the eyes and the nose and the opening of the mouth. So once I have a basic shape laid out, I'll roughly kind of sketch out where I want those things and we'll work on refining them. Once I have my temporary glass pieces laid out for where we're going to add the eyes and I've sketched out and kind of cleaned up the line work for the shape of the mouth, I'm then going to start adding our scales on the top of the head. So this is a little time consuming, but I'm going to roll out clay pieces, kind of cone them off a little bit so they're pointed, and I'm just going to kind of layer them on top of each other until I get to the very front of the nose. As I move closer and closer to the front of the face, I am making our scales smaller and smaller. So I'm just kind of slightly adjusting the size as I go. Now for the end of the nose, I wanted to make something a little bit more decorative and fragile looking for the very end. And because of this, I need to use a different type of clay. So I had to make this part ahead of time. So I'm using epoxy sculpt for this part and I'm just kind of making like decorative layers of it to go together into like a big bundle of stuff. I just wanted something kind of cool and I figured this would look kind of interesting for the end. Almost like a shovel for him to dig with. And again, I made this piece ahead of time so it's already cured and we can attach it to the front. So I'm just going to push it into the face where I want it, make sure I adjust it and make it as even as possible, and then I can blend my other clay into it to kind of make it look like it's one solid piece of clay. After I have this in place, I'm then going to work a little bit on the scaling and adding other features. So for the other scale markings, I'm really not sure how I want to go about it. So I'm kind of winging it and just starting with the bottom jaw and working around what I decide to add. Okay. 
While I'm doing this, I realized I didn't add the nostrils, so I'm gonna add a little bit of clay on the sides of our little shovel thing on the end of the nose and make the nostrils with that. I'm also going to use a little bit of mesh fabric to add more of a texture to the sides of the face, and I'm going to add a few extra scales here and there. Once I'm happy with how this looks, I can put it in the oven for a bake. So I'm going to put it in at 275 Fahrenheit for about 45 to 55 minutes. Once it's out of the oven and it's cooled to touch, I can then swap out our glass pieces with the actual eyes that I want to use, which are these really pretty blue ones I made. So I'm going to glue those in place and then I'm going to get my epoxy sculpt again and I'm going to build the clay around the eyelids, frame those eyes, and I might even add a few extra scales here and there to blend the face together to make it look a little bit more cohesive. It just feels like it's missing something. While I'm at it with the epoxy sculpt, I'm also going to be making our claws. So I'm going to make these on wires, that way it's easier to add them to a poseable frame for the feet. So I'm just going to make the shape of the claw on the end of the wire and I'm going to set these aside to cure. Once we have all of our clay pieces done baking and curing, we can start on painting. So for the face, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be primering it a nice bright color of red. Most of our fabric is going to be red and then we are going to be using blacks here and there. So I'm going to get everything completely painted red and then what we're going to do is we're going to start darkening the top of the head and fade it into that brighter red. Mainly doing this because those scales are going to be black, but I don't want to just paint immediately black, I want it to kind of fade a little bit. Once I'm done adding highlights, I'm then going to let our paint dry a little bit and then I can clean off any excess paint that got on our glass eyes. Now for painting the claws, I'm leaving this really simple. I'm mainly just primering them because we're going to add glitter to these. So I'm going to primer them a very, very dark red, more black than red color. And I'm going to get all of those claws completely primered and ready. Now for adding glitter to clay pieces, I found the best way to make sure that the glitter sticks and doesn't shed off is to use resin and you want to use a very thin coating of it. So I'm going over my claws very lightly with this and then afterwards, once I have them all covered, I'm going to take my glitter and lightly sprinkle over it until everything is completely covered in a thin layer of glitter. 
you'll then leave these to cure and then once you're done letting them cure you'll brush away any glitter that didn't stick to it and that will be the most shedding that it'll do everything else should stay nice and firmly into that resin now if you're worried about it shedding more you're welcome to basically go over the glitter again once your first layer of resin has cured with another layer of resin. This will give it a more glossy feel to it and I didn't really want this for these claws. I wanted to have the kind of rough grainy texture that the glitter gave it. While I was at it with the glitter, I also went over a few of the scales on the top of the head. Basically, I did every other row with glitter. Okay, so we should be ready to start on our fabric. So I'm going to start by showing you the main body pattern and we'll go into more different types of patterns as we go because I'm going to be doing more detailed things. So the first thing is our main body, which I have the back of our dragon, which is the middle section right here. The belly section is going to have a left and a right that is down here. We're going to use the same pattern for the top of the tail and the bottom of the tail, so I didn't make two of those. And then we're going to have armor layers that I am going to layer on top of this fabric. So I've got these little patterns up here to um, connect scaling to. And then of course we need patterns for our legs and our arms. So I've got these laid out here and then the little feet, we've got little patterns here. I've left them pretty simple. I think we're only going to be doing three toes per foot. So let's start on the main body pieces first. I'm gonna start with the tail. The top section of the tail is going to be black and the under belly of the tail is going to be this red spotted fabric. So just keep in mind the top of our dragon is black and most of the underbelly will be a red spotted fabric. So for this I'm just going to take these, pin them together, sew all the way around, and then flip our tail right side out. For the underside of our dragon I have a left and right. I'm going to pin these together and sew down just the um, belly section. So the sides are going to be left open and you'll notice that we have the back of the dragon in the little pile of fabric up there. We won't be doing any sewing with that until we start putting our dragon together. And then for the front and back legs, each one has an inside and outside piece. Like most of my legs, we're just going to sew them down the front section so we have the back section open for adding everything to the wireframe. So I'm gonna get those sewn together and then we can add them to the body fabric for the belly. So I'll mark out where we're gonna connect the front legs and we'll also cut little slits for where we're gonna add the back legs and we're just gonna sew them in place on the body. Once we have the legs sewn in place on the fabric for the body, I'm then going to take the fabric for the tail and connect that to the body as well. And then for the wings, I wanna do something a little bit extra. I've left them pretty basic. We have just a basic shaped wing, but I'm gonna add an extra webbing to the underside of the wing. So let's start with the basic shape first. I have this pattern drawn out on the backing of my fabric, and we're gonna sew around this with our sewing machine. We'll cut this out, flip it right side out, and then we're gonna to have to sew in where all the finger pieces are. For this, I've cut my pattern apart and made basically a new pattern for just the finger sections of the wing. And I'm gonna trace this with a white pencil. I'm just gonna follow the lines that I drew with my sewing machine. For the extra webbing that I wanna add, I'm gonna be using a fake leather. I've got it already cut out and I'm just gonna sew it to the underside of the wing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be adding our wire frame to the wings and we're going to be stuffing them. So the extra finger section, the second one, I'm going to just add a wire section to this. It's not attached to anything else. It'll just help it hold its shape. And then for the rest, I'm going to stuff the body of the wing and then run my wire frame through this. I'm going to connect them basically to the same wire frame. 
Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our feet. So I need to make the wire frame that we're gonna add our claws to. It's basically gonna look like a trident. So we have like three sections, one for each toe. Now for the fabric for the toes, I've got all of my patterns sketched out onto one piece of fabric. It's going to be easier to sew them first and then cut them out because of how tiny they are. And we're only sewing half of the circle. We're leaving the other half open so we can wrap it around the claw, kind of glue it around the base. Once we have the toes put together, we're then going to attach them to one another. So I'm just going to lightly stitch in between the toes so that they are nice and stuck together. Then we're going to take the fabric for the foot and we're going to sew this around. So we're basically going to take a top section, sew it to the top of the foot, and the bottom section will be sewn on the bottom section of the foot. Okay, so now we have the armor to work on and then once we have that done, we can start putting our dragon together. This will take a while though. So we have these fabric sections that we're gonna connect our scales to. I've got one for the top of the head, the back of the body, and the tail. And I've got it where the underside of this will be a red color and the backing black. So I've got these sewn together, we're going to flip them right side out, and then we're going to be sewing a bunch of scales to this. So I'm going to have it alternating between these metal scale armor pieces that I have and fake leather pieces. So I've made a bunch of patterns for the leather sections, and we're just going to be sewing these in layers basically. So we're going to have metal scales, leather scales, metal scales, leather scales, and then just keep going and going and going until we get everything completely covered. I think honestly doing all of these scales took me about two and a half days. It was a lot of sewing. I do think it was really worth it though because I love the changing from a glossy scale to a matte scale. It just adds so much more texture to the scaling by having them switch back and forth. Okay, so I think we're ready to start putting our dragon together. First thing we're gonna do is we have a wireframe set up for the body and we need to add the wireframe of the wings to the body wireframe. Then we can take our clay head and we can glue it to the end of the wire for the neck. Then we're going to take the fabric for the body and we're going to run it over the wireframe. We can then take the section of the neck and we can start gluing it around the base of the head. We're also going to take the fabric for the back of the dragon and glue it to the back section of the head. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work a little bit on our wings. So I need to sew the base of our wings together first. Then we're going to take the fabric for the back of our dragon and we're going to mark out and cut a section for the wings to go. We're going to run this over our wings, just run the wings through this big hole and then we can sew the fabric around the wings in place. Once we have the wings in place, we're then going to start sewing down the sides of the body and the neck. So I'm going to work in sections. I'm going to work on the neck first. I'm going to stuff it and then I'm going to continue going down the sides of the body until I get to where the tail is. Now before I completely close up the body and connect it to the tail, I'm going to take our tail armor and we're going to sew this in place as we close this section up. So I'm going to get that done and then we're going to also stitch the armor in place and pin it down against the fabric for the tail. 
I'm then going to start working on finishing the feet. So we need to add our little posable feet to the wire frames for the legs. So I'm going to connect those in place and then we can start sewing the base of the foot and the base of the leg together and start stuffing and closing that up. So I'm going to work on the back legs first and then I'll move to doing the exact same thing to the front. Once we're done with the legs, we're then going to work on finishing the armor. So I'm going to take the armor for the back section and I'm going to sew that in place. So I'm going to sew it going over the tops of the wings and I'm just going to pin it in place at the back and the top. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to sew the armor for the back of the head in place just behind the head. Now one extra little bit of detail that I decided to add was a little bit of loose skin to the underside of his neck. So I have a little bit of fabric that I sewed together and I'm going to glue it under the jawline and then I'm going to sew it going down the underside of the neck. We're not going to stuff this or anything, I want it to be kind of loose and wiggly. Okay guys, and here is our new dragon. Uh, he doesn't quite fit on camera. <laughs> I need to stop making them so big. I can't help it. <laughs> but I am in love with the scales. You see all those? I'm so happy with how he came out, even though he's giant. <laughs> so I'm gonna have this big boy in my shop. So if anyone wants to buy him, give him a new home. You can check the links down below for that. I'll also have a bunch of other art supply links down there. So if you're interested in what I like to use to make my dolls, you can check those out. Now if you do buy anything through them, they are affiliated links, which means it'll help support the channel if you buy anything through those links. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe to all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!